On Monday, the 3rd of January, 2021, a U.S. jury found Elizabeth Holmes, the founder and CEO of Theranos, guilty of criminal fraud, and she faces a possible 80-year jail term. It can be almost impossible to detect compounds which have low concentrations. Secondly, she claimed that one sample could be reused many times, so you can test for many different things. The problem is, a lot of tests require the blood to be spun in a centrifuge or other preprocessing. The 37-year-old mother of one has been found guilty of conspiracy to commit fraud against investors, and four charges of wire fraud has been brought against her after nearly four months at trial. You know, she has uh, shown her ability uh, at convincing people and manipulating people, and so uh, she'll present a sympathetic figure to a jury and, and uh, possibly be able to manipulate a jury. This is a revolutionary company that threatens to change healthcare. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? If you haven't, kindly click on the subscribe button below to do so. Touch the bell icon to get a notification for the next time we drop one of our interesting videos. Don't forget to also give this video a thumbs up. Who is Elizabeth Holmes? Born on the 3rd of February 1984 to Christian Rasmus Holmes IV and Noel Ann, Elizabeth Holmes is the founder of Theranos, a consumer healthcare technology company. In March 2004, she dropped out of Stanford School of Engineering at 19 and then used her tuition money to found Theranos. Elizabeth's father, Christian Holmes IV, was the vice president at Enron an energy company that later went bankrupt after facing an accounting fraud scandal. He later held executive positions in some government agencies such as USAID, the EPA, and USTDA. In contrast, her mother worked as a congressional committee staffer. Her family moved to Houston from Washington, D.C. when she was young. She was said to have tried to invent her own time machine at the age of seven and filled up an entire notebook with detailed engineering drawings. From a young age, she was reported to have a competitive streak and would always insist on playing to the end during a Monopoly game with her cousin and younger brother. She developed her work ethic during high school when she would stay up late to study and this made her a straight A student. Elizabeth Holmes attended St. John's School in Houston and it is during this period that she discovered that she had an interest in computer programming. She claimed to have started her first business selling C++ compliers, a type of software that translates computer code, to Chinese universities. Partway through high school, she started to take Mandarin lessons and finally talked her way into being accepted into Stanford's university summer program which involved a trip to Beijing. She got admitted into Stanford to study chemical engineering and she won a President's Scholar Honor in her freshman year, which came with a $3,000 stipend to fund a research project. She spent the summer after her freshman year as an intern at the Genome Institute in Singapore. Although she worked as a student researcher and laboratory assistant, her journey into medicine was said to have been inspired by her great-great-grandfather, Christian Holmes, a surgeon. As a sophomore, Holmes approached one of her professors, Shannon Robertson, with an idea to start a company. With his blessing, she founded Real-Time Cures. I believe the individual is the answer to the challenges of healthcare. A wearable device that would administer medication, monitor patient's blood, and adjust the dosage is needed. The following semester, she dropped out of Stanford and started to work on Theranos in the basement of a college house. I was at a point where another few classes in chemical engineering was not necessary for what I wanted to do. Her motivation for starting the company Theranos was her fear of needles, which she discovered very early on in life, which many people could relate with. Her business module for Theranos was to run blood tests using technology that only required a small amount of blood to detect medical conditions like cancer and high cholesterol. Her concept was to get vast amounts of data from a few droplets of blood from the tip of a finger. Her company, Theranos, 
promised that its new technological innovation called the Edison could detect conditions such as cancer and diabetes quickly without the hassle of needles. This innovation caught the interest of everyone, including bigwigs like Henry Kissinger and Rupert Murdoch, who invested heavily. She was reported to have raised more than $900 million from Rupert Murdoch and Oracle founder Larry Ellison, amongst other investors. She gave the investors her own terms and conditions before accepting their funds. She would keep the workings of Theranos' technology a secret and have the final say over the operations of the company, and the investors accepted. So many inside the walls of Theranos say they were too scared to speak up. But there was one unlikely whistleblower willing to take the risk, a research engineer named Tyler Schultz. He also happened to be the grandson of former Secretary of State George Schultz, a board member at Theranos. You also said that Ms. Holmes was manipulative. What do you mean by that? She's really good at telling you what you need to hear to keep going. She definitely did that a lot with my grandfather. She would just like feed him things that were just completely factually not true. People can come in and do full service laboratory testing with a stick from a finger, as opposed to having the tubes and tubes taken from your arm. By December 2004, she had succeeded in raising $6 million to fund the firm. By the end of 2010, she had raised more than $92 million in venture capital for Theranos. Holmes herself was once valued at $4.5 billion and held in high esteem in the biotech industry in Silicon Valley. Holmes enjoyed her fair share of media attention as Theranos started to make millions from investors. She gave a TED talk and spoke on panels with Jack Ma and Bill Clinton. Theranos also began to secure partnerships with hospitals such as Capital Blue Cross and Cleveland Clinic. Elizabeth Holmes from Theranos. Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes. Thank you yeah, for having me. I am so incredibly humbled. We did this. You founded this company 12 years ago, right? Yeah. Tell them how old you were. I was 19. Walgreens also made a deal to open Theranos testing centers, while Safeway formed a secret partnership worth $350 million with them. Everything seemed to be going well for Holmes until she was exposed as a fraud nearly a year later. It turned out that the technology she touted did not work at all, and by 2018, the company she founded had collapsed. The uh, factually not true things that Ms. Holmes told you. The big ones are being able to run hundreds of blood tests from a single drop of blood. My grandfather would go get a Theranos test done and he would have a needle in his arm. You know, it's like, well, I thought this was a single drop of blood. Then there'd be some, you know, excuse about why they needed to take a venous draw for him. But, you know, for everybody else, it's a finger prick. And he continued to buy into that. They weren't even running most of the tests on the Theranos devices. While I was working there, we only ran seven tests on the Theranos devices. And most of the tests were being run on third-party machines. Did Ms. Holmes know at the time that Theranos could not do all those tests? She, yeah, she knew. Her descent from the buzz of fame started in 2015 when a reporter from the Wall Street Journal, John Kerry Rowe, wrote a damning article exposing her Edison test as a sham and the results unreliable. They reported that her firm had been using commercially available machines made by other manufacturers for most of its testing. This started to raise concerns about Theranos' flagship testing device, the Edison. Implications for the public health, and so I thought, well, this is a big story. The partners began to cut ties. Emerging details also revealed that investors didn't test the authenticity of the testing device. They all just liked the idea. For me, I was looking to make money. <laughs> But I worked for a venture capitalist at the time, and um, he said it would be equivalent to Apple uh, and to get as many shares as I could. Investigate Theranos and government agencies in charge of overseeing laboratories discovered major inaccuracies in Theranos' testings.
Elizabeth Holmes and another former executive await a criminal trial. They face up to 20 years in prison. Elizabeth Holmes is stepping down as the chief executive office. Charges from financial regulators that she fraudulently raised $700 million from investors. However, she got arrested three months later along with Mr. Balwani, her then boyfriend, on criminal charges of wire fraud and conspiracy to commit wire fraud. About 30 witnesses, including multiple lab directors, testified as the prosecution attempted to prove that she was aware that the technology was a sham. Some of the witnesses claimed to have pointed out the flaws in the technology to Holmes, but she instructed them to overlook their concerns. Meanwhile, Holmes continued to deceive the investors, claiming that the Edison was working perfectly. Prior to her fall, Elizabeth Holmes had received a lot of accolades for being a force to reckon with in the predominantly male industry. In 2015, she was featured on Time Magazine's list of the world's most influential people, and Inc. Magazine dubbed her the next Steve Jobs. Forbes also named her the world's youngest self-made female billionaire. This is quite similar to the case of Invictus Obi, Nigerian tech entrepreneur, who was also listed on Forbes, only to be found guilty of an $11 million fraud scheme and sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. In his closing statement, the prosecuting counsel, Jeff Schenk, said Holmes chose fraud over business failure. She chose to be dishonest with investors and patients. That choice was not only callous, it was criminal. In her defense, she acknowledged her mistakes, but remained adamant in her denials about knowingly defrauding Edison's users and investors. She also blamed her ex-boyfriend, Ramesh Balwani, who is 19 years his senior and also her former business partner. During the trial, Holmes accused Balwani of sexual and emotional abuse. Balwani is to be tried in the same court for similar charges in March. Holmes managed to avoid conviction of defrauding patients because her lawyers argued that she had not known that the results she was getting were inaccurate. However, she could not sidestep the law when it came to investors because she had allegedly made many false claims to get them to part with their money. First they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. One such claim included telling them that the U.S. military already used Theranos machines in the field. Elizabeth Holmes was released on bail, and she got married to William Billy Evans, a 27-year-old heir to the Evans Hotel Group. They had a son in July 2021. Holmes faced 11 counts of fraud and conspiracy, but the jury could only convict her of four. While there is a likelihood of her appealing the conviction, her attorneys have not said anything officially. Reuters claims that although she is likely to get a lower sentence, there is a possibility of her going to jail for 80 years. As of the moment, the court has not yet set a sentencing date.